Hey you going? This is Mark from Castle Forge Photography and today I'm testing out two cameras at the Heimji Japanese Gardens. Located in Adelaide, South Australia, the gardens were created after Adelaide and the Japanese city Heimji entered a sister city relationship in 1982. Designed by Japanese landscape designer Yoshitaka Kumada, the gardens even have a granite lantern gifted by the city of Heimji in 1985. The garden is a favourite for local photographers and the perfect place to test out my two newest cameras. Canon R5 and the Fujika GW69. The Canon R5 is a full frame 45 megapixel workhorse intended to replace my Canon M50 as my photography business grows. It can shoot up to 8K and its performance as a stills camera and video camera led me to sell my kidney in order to afford the price tag. Purchasing the R5 as body only, I also sprung for the very cheap RF 50mm 1.8 Also known as the Nifty 50, it should be able to cover all my bases as I walk around the gardens. I like to shoot wide open if I can. The ability to get clear separation between the subject and the background is something mobile phones try to replicate it just doesn't look as smooth. The gorgeous oval bocker is worth the shallow depth of field any day. Flowers always make for fantastic test subjects because they can't run away. The birds that live here are hard to capture with a 50mm lens, but I did manage to get close to one or two. The 45 megapixel sensor came up big in post editing. I was able to crop the wide shots and still get some relatively sharp images of the parrots. The rough texture of the trees come up brilliant and let me fill the frame with leading lines of the branches. Switching from a modern powerhouse to something a lot simpler, the Fujika GW690, otherwise known as the Texas Leica, because its design resembles a Leica film camera and it's also pretty big. The Fujika GW690 Professional was released in 1978, shoots 120 film and 6x9 exposures. It's completely mechanical, no electronics, so I actually had to use my R5 as a light meter for my film camera. Adding to the simplicity is a fixed lens, so no need to think about changing lenses or upgrading. It is what you get, a 90mm 3.5. This camera deserves its own video, so I'll get into the details a bit later. For now, I loaded it with some Kodak Portra 400 and started shooting. Because of the large 6x9 exposures, each roll of film would only fit 8 frames, so I had to be very selective. I focused more on capturing people in the environment rather than landscapes. 
I find film is a great storyteller. It can't compete with the sharpness of modern digital sensors, but it has imperfections that just cannot be replicated digitally. Luckily, a lot of people enjoy walk around these gardens to relax, sit by the pond, and have an existential crisis. So I had the opportunity to add some human subjects to my photos. I always prefer to add some human elements somewhere. It gives the scene a sense of having been lived in, natural and unstaged. Always ask for permission whenever possible. This might just be a wave at my camera or a point or a smile. Um, most people are pretty great at this. I've never had a bad interaction when asking for permission. This is one of my favourites of the day. The family pointing at the fish was pretty wholesome and brought so much more to the shot than just a basic landscape. My favourite film shot was the elusive bin chicken, mainly because I had to chase him around on my knees for about 20 minutes. Overall, I was happy with the sharpness of the R5 and the sheer level of adaptability it gave me in post-processing, both color grading and cropping. The Fujika felt like a mechanical beast, one that I had a lot of fun wrestling with. The gardens were magnificent and I highly recommend visiting with or without your camera. that's it thanks for watching guys please like and subscribe so i can make more videos and let me know what you'd like to see more of if you'd like to see more of the r5 or fujika gw690 please comment below and i'll catch you next time bye